when we're truly present and we are in the moment and we're in the visual, visualizing process, the brain does not know the difference between the real life experience and what the person is imagining. Now, experience enriches brain circuitry. And the problem is, is that when we're facing a health condition or a crisis, we always tend to focus on what we don't want to have happen instead of what we do want to have happen because the arousal of the stress hormones prepares us for the worst, right? So, so teaching yourself to stay present and not go to the worst case scenario uh, is being present. And someone who can carry a thought for that long and go through the process of interacting with the kidney. The, the brain doesn't know the difference between if it, whether it's real or not if you don't break from it and start thinking about, am I going to be on dialysis the rest of my life? And if it's one long moment, experience enriches circuitry in the brain. So the brain looks like, over time, that the experience has already happened. You start to install the neurological hardware ahead of the event. Now, if you keep doing it, the hardware becomes a software program and it becomes easier to do it the next time because now you're creating circuitry and what is mind mind is the brain in action so you're installing a new mind that people can heal that quickly in one week yeah because what if they create an inner event that carries an amplitude of gratitude or joy or freedom breakthrough from the chains of the path when the body is liberated and you feel that elevated emotion the stronger the emotion you feel from that breakthrough the more you're gonna pay attention to the image in your mind and now you're now beginning to brand new circuitry in the brain and your body's being conditioned into a new future. And the stronger the emotion you feel, the more you pay attention to the picture, the more you're conditioning the body over time to the future instead of the past. So now you keep knocking on that genetic door emotionally, then that emotion ultimately signals a new gene that upregulates up that gene to produce better proteins. And the person then all of a sudden starts healing. And we have research to show that people can do that in four days, signal genes to reduce cancer cells. And wow. To, to signal stem cells to, to suppress, um, uh, to go to active tissues and repair them and regenerate them and suppress uh, inflammation. Uh, we have research to show that you could change the number of brain cells you have just by, by doing this properly. Well, you know, you come with a lot of genes and they're just a library of potentials. They're just a storehouse of information of possibilities. So then you got to get the right <coughs> signal, the right lock into the key that begins to select and instruct genes that cause genes to make different proteins. And you can regulate so many different genes the same genes you can regulate them differently so when they upregulate they start producing really healthy and robust proteins and that's that's enzymes that's tissue that's structure that's function that's hormones uh, it's immune immunoglobulins when they downregulate because of some alarm when there's not a lot of energy for long-term building projects well then you keep doing that then the body starts producing cheaper proteins. It's a different signal. It's not a time for growth. So uh, if you had experience of trauma, say for example, and it's created the feeling of fear and your fear is that it could happen again. And you're, you don't know this, but every time you think about that future, that possible worst case scenario, scenario and you feel the emotion, you're conditioning your body to become the mind subconsciously of anxiety. So now, all, all you need now is some cue in your outer environment that says it's unsafe, that it's, there's damage there, that you're, you're a victim, something's bigger than you that could have an effect on you. Well, now that feeling of fear is going to cause you to think thoughts equal to it. If you have a perception in your outer environment of some type of danger or threat, the reaction or the response to that stimulation begins to activate the fight or flight nervous system. You're mobilizing energy to prepare yourself for that danger. And when the body perceives that danger, it's a big threat. It doesn't hold back on the amount of energy it's deciding to use. It goes all in. So for the short term, that's fine. But uh, if you keep doing it over and over again, uh, you keep knocking your brain and body out of balance. And that's what stress is. And the, rep the rep repetition of that, keep knocking the body out of balance, begins to weaken the organism. So when a person is perceiving a danger or threat in their outer world and they turn on those adrenal hormones, uh, they're putting all their energy for that threat in their outer world. There's no energy in their inner world for, for repair, for growth. So a person who's constantly feeling fear uh, because they believe something out there is going to get them, to things in their outer environment, then their immune system is compromised. So they actually have more of a propensity 
for infections uh, for foreign agents or invaders because now their body is reacting and constantly responding to the outer world. So um, our research shows that if you trade those emotions of fear, um, uh, of worry, of anxiety, of any vigilance, and you can open your heart, and I know that that doesn't seem natural or normal during these times, but if not now, when? Uh, and, and if you can begin to feel gratitude and appreciation and settle your body into the present moment, four days of feeling an elevated emotion would actually strengthen your immune system by about 50%. We, we've done the research to show that once energy makes it into your heart, the body begins to, it's so objective that it doesn't know the difference between the emotion you're feeling by thought alone and some emotion you would feel from some reaction in your environment. Your body in that state is beginning to believe it's safe enough to relax into the present moment. And, and so when that occurs, the immune system begins to upregulate and it begins to make these antibodies. Um, and those antibodies are the body's natural defense against bacteria and viruses. They're the shields that protect the body from foreign invaders. And, and four days of doing that, imagine if you practice doing that uh, every single day, I think by working with your body and elevating your emotional state, you could literally, you could literally become more resistant uh, or more um, in, in, in a state of order, independent of your outer environment. We do a lot of studies on brain coherence and heart coherence. And let's talk about what it's, what it's not, okay? okay? I mean, so so when there's an emergency or when we're aroused by some threat or some condition in our life or we can't predict an outcome, we can't control an outcome, we have the perception that something in our world could possibly get worse, we switch on that primitive nervous system, right? That yeah. fight or flight nervous system. And now the game is fight, run, or hide. The problem is, is with human beings, when we're at it, we feel like a loss of control. Our brain all of a sudden tries to control everything in our life. So every person, every object, everything, every place, every experience that you've ever had is mapped in your neocortex. So the arousal of the stress hormones drives the brain into a very high brainwave state called high beta. But then as you shift your attention from one meeting to another meeting, to another text, to another person, to another thing, to another place you have to go, every one of those different elements has a neurological network in the brain. So like a lightning storm in the clouds, the brain starts firing out of order. It starts firing incoherently. And when the brain is incoherent, we're incoherent. And so think about when you're stressed. The most common thing that people do is they over-focus. They narrow their focus on whatever it is that's driving them to pay attention to it. Yeah. And so then the act of paying attention to the problem is actually driving the brain further out of balance. And we've studied this. When you analyze that problem, that circumstance, that condition within the emotion that you are feeling and derived by the hormones of stress, you'll make your brain worse 100% of the time because the analysis, the over-analysis is driving it further into a higher thinking, higher beta brainwave state. So this kind of narrow focus is what causes the brain to be a house divided against itself. So we thought, well, why don't we do the opposite? Why, instead of narrowing our focus on the cause, something physical, something material, because the hormones of stress actually heighten the senses and cause us to become materialist. So matter is the issue when there's survival. It's whatever's around the corner, it's whatever's going to happen. So we said, okay, let's teach people something else. Let's teach them how to broaden their focus. Mm -hmm. And as they broaden their focus and take their attention off of everything material and everything known and focus on space, focus on nothing, the act of doing that actually starts slowing down the analytical mind. You can't analyze when you're sensing. And it starts to change the person's brain waves into a slower brain wave pattern. Right. And so now as you start slowing your brain waves from that high beta, you start slowing down, you're shifting gears, you go into a mid-range beta, then you go into a low-level beta, and then all of a sudden you get into alpha. Now alpha, when you're in alpha, the voice in your head, the critic in your mind goes away that voice that's talking to you stops and the brain tends to see in images, in yeah. pictures. That's the imaginary state. That's a creative state. And in alpha, when you're out of survival, you're looking for answers. You're creative. You're looking for new ways of doing things. So 
when they broaden their focus, not only do they move into alpha, but all of a sudden we start seeing those different compartments of the brain that were once subdivided. Yeah. All of a sudden starting to unify. Different communities of neurons that were fragmented start to synchronize. You sit down and you say, okay, I don't want to be unhappy. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to talk trash about t people. I don't want to complain. I want to blame. I don't want to make excuses. I don't want to feel lack. I don't want to have an attitude that's uh, telling me I can't, it's too hard. That's the old identity, right? So the moment you start becoming conscious yeah. of those unconscious thoughts, the moment you become aware of your automatic habits and behaviors, the moment you can notice that this is actually guilt that you're feeling or sadness or pain, the moment you can become conscious and familiar with those states of mind and body, if you keep becoming familiar with it, if you keep becoming conscious of it, you won't go unconscious. So sitting yeah. in a meditation to know thyself, most people all of a sudden, here comes the barrage of thoughts. Here comes the, the propensities and habits, and here comes the emotions. The body's saying, you normally complain at this time. What are you doing sitting with your eyes closed? Let's think of a reason why you can complain. And the body starts influencing the mind. So if you break it down to a, a, for, a, for a person to understand, how many times do we have to forget until we start remembering and keep remembering and stop forgetting? That's the process of change. So then you took, put a person in a meditation and they hear that voice, they hear that chatter, they, they want to get up and take a, go to the bathroom, they want to check their cell phone, they want to feel angry. And instead of getting up and saying, I can't meditate, see, that's, they're coming to the end of the known. So they want to go back to what's known, right? If you, ask, if you teach the person what to do and you show them that on the other side of that is freedom, on the other side yeah. of that is joy, it, you got to become so conscious and it takes a lot of awareness it takes a lot of energy to sit with yourself long enough to disentangle from those programs. Now, we now know that it's a formula, that if you follow a formula, you will actually start pruning circuitry. You'll start the stop the conditioning process and move the body out of the past, and it starts liberating energy. And that's, that's energy to heal with. That's energy mm -hmm. to create a new life. That's energy to digest again. That's the body's no longer living in survival.